Roughly 160,000 people have had to evacuate from their homes along the borders between Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, and Argentina due to severe flooding. The disaster comes in the wake of heavy summer rains brought on by El Nino. Paraguay has been hardest hit. The government has declared a state of emergency in seven regions throughout the country. 90,000 people have been evacuated in the area around the capital city of Asuncion. Many are poor families living in precarious housing along the banks of the Paraguay River. Yearnings for peace mobilized thousands across Colombia this year. Meanwhile, in Havana, efforts were being intensified to push forward a peace process that has advanced much further than any other previous negotiations with the FARC insurgency. Considered by many as the most pressing issue of the talks, an agreement on the point of justice and victims came as a major breakthrough. It is a historic step forward. Now truth and acknowledgement of responsibility have the possibility to be the entry point for compensating the victims. And that's the way it must be done because no one could expect reparations for the victims if the truth over what has really happened in Colombia is not accepted. Within an agreement based on reparations, guarantees of non-repetitions and truth for the victims, all actors that have been involved are now expected to acknowledge their responsibility in a conflict that has left over 7 million victims and deep wounds. Presente, presente. After 30 years of one of Colombia's most traumatic events, President Santos accepted the state responsibility and apologized for the forced disappearances during the 1985 military retake of the Palace of Justice. Hoy reconozco la responsabilidad del Estado. In a much more private and far more significant ceremony for the victims, the FAR asked the people of Bojaya for forgiveness for the 2002 events, when a homemade projectile aimed at paramilitary troops exploded instead in a charge, killing dozens. Por quienes, ojalá algún día, seamos perdonados. The damage inflicted upon the community and its members is literally irreversible, but that does not mean that the past cannot be overcome and that this acknowledgement of the victims cannot lead to their empowerment as well as a better life in the future. On the way to strengthen the confidence of society towards the peace process, a joint operation between the army and the FARC to start clearing landmines was also agreed in Havana. It was the first time Colombia was seeing battlefield enemies working together to create conditions of peace in the rural war zones. The humanitarian cost of war diminished to levels unseen in a long time, as FARC also complied with a series of unilateral truces, which the government responded to by halting air strikes. Many lives have been spared. Peace has returned to many places in the country, and there is no doubt that has to do with the FARC's decision to move forward with a unilateral ceasefire and in general with all the peace process in Havana has brought with it. Nothing is agreed until everything is agreed is the principle of the negotiations in which a final peace deal has yet to be reached. However, this year brought for many a slight glimpse of a Colombia other than the one at fierce war. Natalia Margarita, Telesur, Colombia. In the United States on Saturday, Chicago police shot and killed 19-year-old Quintonio Legree and 55-year-old Betty Jones after responding to a call of domestic disturbance. The families of both victims have condemned Chicago police for their response. He was just so sweet and kind. Now my mama gone. Because senseless behavior of the Chicago PD. Who is y'all serving and protecting? Like, really, who are y'all serving and protecting? At least eight people have died across northern Texas after a tornado struck on Saturday evening. Huge damage was sustained to buildings and infrastructure, as shown by footage shot in the Dallas suburbs of Ovila and Roulette. In Iraq on Saturday, government troops continued their push to retake the city of Ramadi, which is held by the Islamic State group. Soldiers advanced in the Haas neighborhood that houses the provincial government compound, the target of an attack that started on Tuesday. The commander of Iraq's anti-terrorism contingent said that troops would be in control of Ramadi in a matter of days. 
today in the Gaza Strip, there has been several protests, uh, Palestinian protests that were organized by either political parties or the normal Palestinian citizens of Gaza condemning what happened uh, yesterday, sorry, two days ago when uh, Egyptian uh, guards shot and killed a mentally ill Palestinian who was trying to uh, cross the uh, border fence between Gaza and Egypt. In the West Bank uh, today, Palestinian medical report, uh, sources reported that one Palestinian was killed after, sorry, two Palestinians were killed after uh, they stabbed and attacked an Israeli soldier in uh, the West Bank. This might seem a little strange, but a traditional Peruvian shamanic ceremony was performed at the Fair of Wishes Market in the Peruvian capital Lima on Saturday. The ceremony uses guinea pigs, which are supposed to help cure and prevent diseases. According to ancient shamanic tradition, the guinea pigs have been used to heal people for hundreds of years. The guinea pig is meant to crawl on the patient and diagnose the problem. After the shaman rubs the animal on the patient, the illness should disappear.